Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Putting on some light sleeves here to do some light TIG welding on outside corner joint today. Outside corner joint on 16 gauge cold rolled steel for a little box I'm framing up. And that goes something like this. If the heat's set right and I hold my mouth right and then the camera's not in my way too much. So I'm framing it up using a little piece of uh, one inch uh, angle iron to stiffen up the top of it. I'm getting tack welds all on the inside and then I'm going to come back once it's all tacked up. Got a little coping to do here, something I didn't account for. But once it's all tacked up, I got a lot of outside corner joints to weld. Outside corner joint is uh, one of the easier joints probably. And since this has got a little angle on them, I'm going to position it and I'm going to kind of scoot downhill. Got it all tacked up with the angle. Don't even have to have any tacks on a lot of it on the outside. So it should, should go pretty well today. Just going to set it on the table and uh, I'll be welding kind of like a 45 degree uh, angle just downhill and that makes it go a little bit easier. So they're lighting up on a, on a, where I left off on one. I just want to use kind of like just enough heat to melt the corner and, uh, and that's really about it. If I go a whole lot hotter than that, the, things are going to get a little squirrely with me. So this is a little more heat than what's necessary, but I'm in the ballpark actually only using about maybe 55 to 60 amps you know going by that rule of thumb of one amp per thousandths that's a little less than the uh, 63 thousandths of the thickness and I am pimping the TIG finger today I think it's pretty awesome for jobs like this because you hand your pinky will get hot propping next to the weld and uh, the TIG finger will let you slide and go long distances before your, before your fingers toast so you can flop it around in all kinds of different positions and it just slides nicely along the, uh, the joint and uh, lets you go a long way and just a handy little tool for propping where there is no prop. Once again, slipping on going downhill like this, trying to keep a pretty tight arc about, like I said, 55 to 65 amps in that range somewhere. I'm using a foot pedal so, you know, some of these joints have angle iron behind them, some of them don't, so it takes a little bit of uh, different heat. Here I'm going to weld to the end and I will talk about uh, I'm gonna get a little bit hotter than I need to be here that was a little hot right there but here coming up it's gonna get a little squirrely see how the puddle runs out a little bit further that's more heat than what I needed didn't necessarily do that on purpose to show you I just you know uh, sometimes do that and I'm getting to the end here so I'm backing off the amperage leaving the rod in the puddle right to the end and then getting off that foot pedal so I don't blow the corner away that's the benefit of having a foot pedal and also the benefit of having a foot pedal as opposed to a uh, torch mounted remote because you don't wiggle the torch you want to keep it in there tight and also I went a long distance because I had that little TIG finger on being able to slide a good uh, eight or nine inches now the heat's about right here see I'm just able to kind of zip along at a real good travel speed the puddles not getting squirrely uh, not a real tight arc because I I'm shaking a little bit and I want to clean my electrodes all day, but that's what it looks like when you got the heat pretty close. Also, uphill, downhill, TIG weld in the outside corner like this, uh, you know, one's not a whole lot harder than the other. Downhill, you can go a little bit faster, but uphill, just slow the travel speed down a little bit and, and uh, probably a, a five or ten less amps. Any, anything uphill is going to take a little bit less amperage than, uh, than downhill does. Just looking, just rolling that corner off is still is what you're looking for. And also, I tell you, the, probably the, this really didn't even need any filler metal. This could have could have finished up a lot quicker and uh, probably looked a little tighter and nicer with just fusing it together like this. It wouldn't make for a very interesting instructional video though, so uh, I decided to not do that and just show you one there. Also, if you got little gaps like this, a tip tip is uh, you can't step out very far before you add filler metal on a gap like this. That's probably the biggest, most important thing. You got to add rod often and uh, don't move the torch much in between rod additions. So that once that box is done, it's going on the corner of this little cutting table here. So I'm blowing out some holes with this plasma cutter circle attachment. I'll go over that in another video coming up. But a uh, little attachment here from Miller works slicker than you know what. For uh, zipping out circles like this. So this is a little air box that the fume extractor snorkel arm is going to go on and uh, I figured I would show you a little snippet here of this little circle cutting attachment.
just to show you the application here. And that is going to go on the corner like that. And that's going to be probably a good hip getter walking around the shop. But it's the only way I know of uh, making an easy way where I can fasten the fume extractor to this thing and then unfasten it and move it over to the welding table when I, when I want to swap off. So, well, that's it for today. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can click on the little blue link in the uh, description box and it'll take you to the web page and you can see more details of amperage and, and uh, machine settings, flow rates, and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.